Okay, with these videos about props out of the way, now we can start talking about state. So props allows us to pass data from one component to the next, working down through the chain of hierarchy. Components nested inside components, nested inside components, we use props to pass the information down through those props. State is something that exists inside of each component. So every component has its own local state. You can think of it as the state of that component on the web page. Is it on? Is it off? Is it black? Is it blue? Um, what, what data are you displaying inside that component right now? Is the person logged in? Or are they logged out? So there's lots of things that you can use state for, but the state is contained inside of a component. Now, we can take the information from state, put it in a prop, and pass it on to another component so it will still travel down through the component chain if you put parts of it inside of props. We can also take values from props and feed that into the local state. State is just going to be whatever we're working with inside this component at this time. So why do we do this? Why do we have state instead of just a variable? Well, very simply, React uses state to decide what to render. If you make a change to state, then the component re-renders. All right, so I have my constructor method, I've got my render method, I've got that beer click method that I was using before. When the user clicks on my list, their list item, this beer click is going to run. So if we look on the web page, here we are, we click on these guys, and every time I click, it's calling that beer click function. If I were to go and look inside of here, click on the list item, sure enough, there it is, the on click, there's my function being called. It's not doing anything right now, but this function is going to run. What I would like to do is I want to take the data that's being passed down. So my list item has props. It has all of this information. Right now, I'm only showing beer. So when I click, I want to show the brewery. And then I click again, I'll show the style. I click again, it goes back to beer. So I want to cycle through all these bits of information. And the user can click on them individually to cycle through those bits of information. State is perfect for doing something like this. OK, so let's jump in here. How do I create state? Well, state exists in the component, but we can set an initial value like this. So this.state equals, and then this object is my state. Um, we can set an initial value, but we have to do it here. This is where we're supposed to do it is inside the constructor. I can't set an initial state inside the render method or some other lifecycle method. Constructor is where it's supposed to be done. Well, I want to take the stuff from props. I have props right here. So I can do props.beverage. Let's create a property called beer. It'll be props.beverage.beer. And I'm going to do this with the other ones too. So brewery. I'm going to get it from brewery. I want the style to be coming from the style. And then this last one, I'm going to make a property called dis dis mm, display prop. This is going to be set by default to beer. So why beer? Well, what I'm going to do is when the person gets the page loaded, this is going to be the beer property. When they click on it, it becomes the brewery property. And I'm going to change this display prop from beer to brewery to style. So this is the property that I'm going to be changing each time the person clicks. When you click in here, I'm going to run a switch statement. This switch statement is going to be this dot state dot display prop. There we are. I'm going to have a case where it is beer. I'm going to have a case where it's brewery. And I'm going to have a case where it is style. There we are. Okay. That should be a semicolon after break. There we are. 
So we're going to change what the value of this display prop is. Because right now, if I click on here, it's always going to be beer. Now, I can't do this. I cannot do this.state.displayprop, for example, equals something else. I cannot change it this way. It's what I did up here, but I can't do it anywhere else. Here, I'm setting an initial value. Down here, if I'm doing this, what happens is it's the same as if I were to take a variable Let's say I declared a variable outside here, con or let name equal Steve. Okay, simple enough. I've created a variable down inside of here. If I were to say name equals Roderick, fine. I've changed the value. This will change the value, but nobody else knows that I've changed the value. React doesn't know that I've changed the value of this variable, so it can't react to it and change anything. It can't re-render anything. So I don't want to do that. I'm not going to use this variable and change things. So how do we change it? Well, there is a method called setState. We can call this.setState whenever we want to change something. And inside of here, there's two different versions. One where I just create a new object and I say, I'm going to be changing the property called display prop. And here's the new value that I want. I want it to change to brewery. So I'm going to do this in all three. If it's brewery, I'm going to change it to style. If it's style, I'm going to change it back to beer. So that's the first way that you can use set state. You pass in an object, and I'm not losing these other properties. I'm just passing in this object to say, hey, if there's something inside of state called this, change the value to this. And this method is what allows React to watch state and see that it's been changed, and therefore re-render components that are relying on it. Okay, so let's take a look at this in the page. We're rerunning it. Okay, wonderful. Great. I'm going to come in here and look at the list item here. Here's props, and here's state, and there's the display prop beer. So let's click on this one. Click. The display prop is now brewery. Now it's style, beer. So I'm just going through calling this click method, which is calling set state, and it's updating that value for me again and again. And it's working for any one of them. So if I come into, let's see, town and country, if I click on that one, display prop is now brewery, now it's style. If I click on this one, same thing happens. So I can change all of them independently. So this one's brewery. Town and country, it's set to beer. Click again, brewery, now it's style. I come up to Sweet Lulu. Sweet Lulu, it's set to brewery as well. So they're all independent from one another. Great. Now, how do I use this? Well, instead of coming down here and using these variables, I don't need that anymore. I've passed this.props, I still need it on here because I used props to set my initial state. But what I want to write out here, this.state dot, well, I'm changing that. I want it to be this.state.beer, and then this.state.brewery, and then this.state.style. That's why I created this display property. So I can change it. I can say this, then this, then this. So inside of state, I want to dynamically calculate what the property is that I'm going to display. So it is this.state.displayprop. There we are. So this we saw as if we were clicking on things, that was changing from beer to brewery to style. So this.state.beer, this.state.brewery, this.state.style. That's what's 
going to change this. So now, as I click on these, I am changing between the beer, the style, and the brewery. And it all works completely independently. So now they're all style. Click on that, that's beer, or sorry. Yeah, that's brewery, that's style, and that's beer. Beer, 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 beer. Okay, excellent. So that's state. State, you set an initial state inside the constructor. Inside the constructor, you can pass props in for an initial value. Makes it very quick and easy to do. Inside of any other method, I don't care where it is, if it's in functions that you've built, if it's inside of other methods, you have to use set state. And your options are to either pass an object in, or the other way of doing it is this dot set state. There we are. And then this will be an arrow function that we put inside. which will give us state and props passed in automatically. And then we can use them inside of here to make changes and say, okay, I want to change this property to something else. So that is how we can do that. And if you want to read a little bit more about it, here's the link up here. I will put, post this link inside the description for the video. So if you uh, want to read a little bit more about it, there is more to state. We're going to be talking more about state when we talk about the lifecycle methods. But for now, this gives you plenty that you can do with state. So props are for passing information down. State is local within the component. It's used for re-rendering the content. When you make a change, React will update the interface for you. That's what it's for. All right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.